Hi. In this podcast, we're going to look at the higher level material on stellar processes. In particular, we're going to look at the genes criterion, or the genes in this, and we're going to look at fusion on the main sequence and the consequences that has on the lifetime of stars. In the view understandings, we have the genes criterion on nuclear fusion, we have applying the genes criterion to star formation and applying the mass luminosity relation to compare lifetimes in the main sequence relative to that of the Sun. So we're going to start basically with a bit of stellar evolution and then continue from the stellar nursery through to the main sequence stage of the star's life. The genes criterion, we don't, we don't need to know in very much detail, but we do need to know that it was developed by Sir James Hopwood Genes in the early part of the 20th century. And he derived this relationship, which you can see there at the bottom of the screen. You're not expected to know or even use the equation, really. That says that if you want a cloud of interstellar dust and gas to collapse, then it has to have a greater than a certain mass. The amount of mass it needs depends upon the temperature of the star of the dust cloud, or the kinetic energy of the dust cloud, on average, and the uh, size of the dust cloud as a function of its mass, in other words, its density. If you want it to collapse, then it's better to make it cold and dense. If it is not very dense if it's diffuse and spread out and um, and relatively warm then it's going to make it very hard to 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 collapse because the gravitational potential energy is going to be a lot less than the kinetic energy of the particles so that's the genes criteria and the genes criterion basically says that the collapse of an interstellar cloud may only begin if the mass of that cloud is bigger than the genes mass which is as i say Worked out from this equation, where Cs is the uh, actually the speed of sound in a material, which is a function of its uh, temperature, and rho is the density of the material. Okay, so let's assume that our dust cloud does collapse. Eventually, it will enter the main sequence, and the main sequence, you recall, is defined as the period of time during which hydrogen burning is the only way that the uh, the only form of fusion that takes place in the core of the star. And for most low mass stars, that cycle is dominated by the proton proton cycle. Two protons form deuterium, give off positron and neutrino, deuterium, and another proton merge to form helium 3 and give off a photon, and that photon carries a lot of the energy away. That's the actual luminosity there. And then the two uh, helium 3 is merged to form helium 4 and two leftover protons. Proton proton cycle, we've seen it before. In higher mass stars, uh, a bit higher than our sun, uh, the same process of hydrogen burning is happening but in a different way. Instead, uh, fairly early on, a little bit of carbon 12 is made, and then that carbon 12 acts as a nuclear catalyst. In other words, um, hydrogen interferes with that carbon to form an isotope of nitrogen which then decays back to carbon then I've got carbon 13 now which then gets a proton goes to nitrogen 14 and then another proton hits it goes to oxygen 15 then it decays to nitrogen 15 and then another hydrogen hits and gives off uh, uh, makes it nitrogen 15 makes it carbon 12 again plus a helium gas so again you get um, sort of four protons in for a helium out but the difference is and this is quite a big difference is that it, it's a much more uh, aggressive reaction it's a much faster reaction because it is catalyzed um, instead of just being straight uh, non-catalyzed nuclear reaction and this has an effect it has an effect on the main sequence it has an effect on the lifetime of stars on the main sequence this Hertzsprung Russell diagram, you've seen it before, and it has those lifetimes marked. And you, you should know by now that the, the the really big, massive stars have a very short lifetime, whereas the faint red dwarf main sequence stars have a very long lifetime. But can we put an equation on that? 
well, we know the luminosity mass relationship is L is proportional to m to 3.5, and also we can define luminosity as the energy emitted per unit of time. Now, over its lifetime, burning hydrogen, a certain mm, mass of a star, a function of proportional to its kappa, is converted to energy. Now, the formula for energy conversion is E equals mc squared. So luminosity equals E over T equals mc squared over T. But instead of just m, we're going to say the proportion of the mass which has been converted to energy. So kappa big mc squared over tau. Well, tau is the lifetime of the star. Okay, so the total energy conversion, kappa mc squared over tau, the lifetime of the star. And rearranging this gives us a function for tau, the lifetime of the star, and well, the, the lifetime on the main sequence of the star as being kappa m c squared over L. So it's uh, directly proportional to m and, and inversely proportional to the luminosity. But, as we've just said, luminosity is proportional to m to the 3.5. So just talking about proportionality, tau is proportional to m, but it's inversely proportional to m to 3.5, or tau is proportional to m to the negative 2.5, the greater the mass, the less the luminosity. Let's actually put that into use. Here is the equation that would, we would use to compare a, the lifetime of a given star to the lifetime of our sun. Suppose we have a star with 10 times the mass of our sun, so t star over 10 to the 10, which is the lifetime of our sun in years, equals 10 solar masses over the mass of our sun. One solar mass to the power of negative 2.5. If we Complete that equation, we get 3.2 times 10 to the minus 3. So we multiply that by the lifetime of our sun, 10 to the 10, and equals 10 to the 7 years. So let's just check that on the hairspring russell diagram. Here's our sun, one solar mass, lifetime 10 to the 10 years. Paired up the main sequence, we get to 10 solar masses, okay? Which is more or less approximately, as it says, a lifetime of about 10 to the 7 years. So 10 to the 10 is 10 billion years. 10 to the 7 is a mere 10 million years. So that's a significant change in that. So we've looked at nuclear fusion on the main sequence in the genes criteria. We've applied the genes criteria and we've applied the luminosity to confirm the results. That is done. Thank you very much.